Good morning, Benjamin Hatfield. Teach me to dive. Technical dive instructor right here in Idaho. Today's Friday message, we're delving into the intriguing world of bubble dynamics and decompression theory. But what's gonna make this episode extra special is gonna be our focus on the Bullman model, the Mac Daddy of diving algorithms. Now remember, if you like this type of content, make sure you subscribe to our channel, share it with your friends, and hit that notification bell so you won't miss a second of the oceanic goodness we have in store for you. Now, before we go too far, let's explore just a little bit of history first. Let's start with a name that we have all heard before and time warp a little over 100 years ago to John Scott Haldane. Now, Haldane proposed in 1908 the first real mathematical model in the form of a decompression table for decompression modeling and had prepared it for the British Admiralty based upon his extensive experiment on goats and other animals using a clinical endpoint of symptomatic decompression sickness. Now, by the way, Haldane was yet another Scottish uh, physiologist to make a key impact on the diving world, but at least this time, he wasn't experimenting on snakes. Now, Haldane's revelation was this, that a two to one ratio of ambient pressure and theorized that the body had five tissue compartments and characterized their ability to perfuse and diffuse gas in a half-time model. Haldane was working from the previous work of Paul Burt and worked with the concept of stage decompression as early as 1907. Now, Haldane's model remains the basis for modern decompression tables, although Haldane's first decompression tables proved to be far from ideal. Now, even though they weren't ideal, Haldane's equation is used by many dive computers and dive tables today. Now, let's fast forward a little bit in time, but we come to Captain Robert Workman, who in the 1960s, working with the U.S. Navy's experimental diving unit, began to make significant changes to the Haldane concepts. Workman revised Haldane's model to take into account the fact that each of the various tissue compartments can tolerate a different amount of overpressurization or supersaturation points, and that this level changed with depth. Now, he introduced the term M value to describe the amount of overpressurization each compartment could tolerate at any depth. Now, you might ask yourself, what is an M value? Let's visualize this for just a moment. Every balloon you see has a maximum amount of air it can hold before you have to let air or it pops. Now, this is a crude way to describe it, but our tissues are much the same way. There is a maximum amount of gas they can hold, and we describe this as being their M value. Now, while the tissue compartments won't pop, it is forced to let gas out as we reduce pressure on our bodies due to the ascending during the dive. Now, we can add gas to the tissue compartment on a descent due to the fact the pressure and reduced molecular size of the gas is entering into the tissue. Now, Workman's research added four more slow tissue compartments to the model previously created by Haldane. But Workman decided to simplify the table process and presented his calculations as an equation which could calculate the results at for any depth. Workman was also one of the first people to identify the role that computers would play in the calculation of decompression tables. Workman's critical difference was created, but unfortunately it was later proven incorrect as well. And while he was on the right trail, he had increased the safety margin dramatically. It wasn't until Albert Bullman came on the scene that the algorithms really took a turn for the better. Now, before we dive into Bullman too far, let me introduce you to the, the man behind Bullman. That's Albert Bullman, whose contributions to decompression theory have less a, left a lasting impression on us to this day. So, what's so special about the Bowman model and how does it relate to bubbles in the bloodstream and even bubbles in a bottle of carbonated soda? Let's explore. Now, let's grasp the, the essence of the Bowman model. This model was developed by Albert Bowman and serves as the cornerstone of decompression theory today. Albert Bowman's set of parameters is a Haldanian mathematical model of the way in which inner gases enter and leave the body. Bowman was able to build on the work of Haldane and the Royal Navy from 1908 and Robert Workman's M values in 1965 while working from funding provided by Shell Oil Company. Now, Bowman model meticulously simulates the behavior of a gas bubble in the human body during decompression. It accounts for the way dissolved gases come out of a solution or diffuse as pressure decreases during ascent. 
Through this, Bowman was able to increase the number of tissue compartments to 16 compartments in 1983, whereas Workman only had nine. Since 1983, Bowman has been updated several more times until 1980 with his final algorithm we actually use today, the ZHL16C. To make it work, the Bowman model relies on various principles and assumptions, such as how gases diffuse, nucleate, and grow within the body's tissue and fluids. The key lies in predicting when, where, and how bubbles might form. Now, let's appreciate the historical significance of the Bowman model. Ah, yeah, It was developed in the latter half of the 20th century and quickly became an invaluable tool for understanding the risks of decompression sickness. So why are we so concerned about bubbles forming in the human body, especially during diving? Well, these bubbles aren't as fun as those in your soda. They can be life-threatening. When you ascend too quickly during a dive or come up from great depths, the reduction in pressure can lead to the formation of gas bubbles in your bloodstream. These bl bubbles can block blood flow, damage tissues, and cause a serious medical condition known as decompression sickness. Now, here's where the Bowman model shines. It provides insights into bubble formation and growth, helping divers and researchers understand when and why bubbles might occur. This knowledge has significantly improved diving practices and safety. Now, let's make a connection that's sure to stick with you. Bubbles in a carbonated bottle. How do they relate to bubbles in your bloodstream during diving? Now, surprisingly, there is a connection. First, let's start with a sealed bottle of carbonated beverage in a bottle. As we look at the carbonated bottle while it's sealed, we can compare this to our body uh, of a diver at depth we would say the body is fully saturated to 100% of M value. These gases are neither entering nor leaving and are at equilibrium with their current pressure and surroundings. If we were to measure this on the Shearwater Perdix, it would read 0% on the GF99. The Apex DSX uh, would have no green bars on the GF gauge and the Garmin Descent would show zero on its gauge. Our maximum capacity for tissues has been reached and the only way for that to change is it to either reduce or add pressure. In other words, ascend or descend in the water column. But what happens when we open this bottle? As the pressure decreases, when you open this bottle, bubbles form and rise to the surface. This is similar to the bubbles of nitrogen that would be leaving your tissues, forming into bubbles and entering your veins as you ascend during the dive. Now let's just look a little deeper though. As the bubbles rise, they appear to double in size. Why is this? Is this an example of Boyle's law at work? Well, if you said yes, you're somewhat correct, but not in the way you think. For a bubble to truly double in size, we would need a great deal of pressure reduction um, and more than what the 10 inches of the bottle uh, would be able to accommodate. Now, while Boyle does apply here, what you're seeing is the end result in your bottle with the massive amount of depressurization that just occurred. What you're really seeing here um, as the bubbles are getting larger, the, the bubble seeds are being created, being perfused with much smaller bubbles around them in the surrounding liquid and allowing them to join in to create a much larger bubble. In other words, microscopic bubbles are joining the bubbles you can see to make even larger bubbles. As the tension of these microscopic bubbles is reduced, they become malleable enough to be able to mold with other bubbles. Now, here's the part that Boyle plays in this. As the pressure is reduced on the bubbles, they soften and can now merge with other bubbles. This merging of bubbles is perfusion portion. Bubbles left uh, the tissue that held them or diffused from the, uh, diffused from them to the venous system and into the blood. Um, in their progression, bubbles move from bubble seeds, microscopic bubbles, to silent bubbles, which are very small bubbles. And when they grow past the body's ability to easily manage and expel them, they grow to become symptomatic bubbles, which are large enough to block veins and cause a wide range of DCS symptoms. It is at this point that we can say the person has DCS. Now, here's the key. The Bowman model has been instrumental in understanding and mitigating these risks. It is through the Bowman model that we are able to judge how slowly to reduce the pressure or ascend in the water column and when to create a stage decompression stop 
as well as for how long we need to stay at the decompression stuff in order to allow the bubbles to slowly exit our tissue compartments. Now, in closing, we've journeyed through the faceting realm of bubble dynamics and decompression theory, from Haldane to Workman and landing on Bowman model. Albert Bowman's work has truly been a game changer, enhancing our understanding of the bubble formation during decompression and the dangers it possesses. The Bowman model isn't just historical. It remains relevant today, continuously shaping and um, our diving practices and ensuring the safety of divers worldwide. Over the years, many people have tried to improve upon this model, from RGBM to VPM and even Pile. Now, you may be wondering where the gradient factors come into play here. Now, that's a good question. A gradient factor is simply this. Eric C. Baker came up with a calculation trick that consists of creating a percentage of each M value in order to increase the conservativeness of the algorithm and create a safety margin between the maximum amount of the gas a tissue can hold to create a new safety margin for the diver. So a grading factor or GF high of 80% would mean that you had created a 20% safety margin or only 80% of the total pressure that the tissue compartment would need to be saturated to 100%. Now, one last note for your consideration in this. In the Bullman model that most every dive computer uses, there are 16 compartments and each of these compartments have a different speed at which they off gas, AKA diffuse gas. By the way, this is also measured in half times. Now the challenge with looking at a 2D chart of these compartments and M values is that you can only see the compartment, uh, one compartment in action at a time. In reality, it should be a 3D model showing all compartments. The model for M value and supersaturation is led by or controlled by what we term as the controlling tissue. This is the tissue within the 3D model of the 16 different compartments that has reached the point of supersaturation and has the largest off-gassing diffusion of all the tissue compartments. Now, another way to look at this compartment is this. The controlling tissue is producing the largest nitrogen bubbles out of all the compartments and is the most dangerous one for creating DCS. The Bowman model sees this and shows a recommendation to slow down or stop in an effort to control the size of those bubbles and keep them under control. We would say that its goal is to keep all the bubbles at bubble seeds or to cyan bubbles and not allow them to grow in size and become symptomatic bubbles. Now, if you're interested in more information about gradient factors, take a look at our other videos on this subject. Now, thanks for joining us on this educational dive into bubble dynamics. If you're enjoying this video and want more deep sea content like this, please subscribe, share your thoughts, and let us know in the comments below. Now, until next time, my name is Benjamin Hadfield. I'm a technical dive instructor um, and teaching all the things that you might want to know. Make sure to let me know what you wanted to learn next, and we'll be happy to create a video on that. Again, subscribe, like, and share with your friends. Have a great day.